Hey, what's up guys? So from last week having a super heat wave of 36 degrees Celsius, nearly every single day, we've got this cold, wet, rainy, but it's nice weather. Uh, today I want to talk about shoulder popping. So if your shoulder moves around a lot and your shoulder pops every time you move it, uh, it's a lack of stability in the shoulder and a lot of people with shoulder injuries have this popping including me so I'm going to show you a few things that you can do if you're still struggling with a bad injury and you can't move around too much you can't use weights or anything I'm going to show you three simple little things that you can do just to get a little bit of a more stable shoulder joint so that it doesn't move around too much in the socket and it can feel a little bit more stable and help you with any pain okay the very first thing we're going to be doing is putting our hand on our hip and we're going to be pushing backwards with our elbow and shoulder joint so you're going to be going back and forth but we're going to have to stabilize the shoulder because the shoulder joint is going to be moving around so you want to stabilize with your other hand and we're going to be doing this against the door frame or cupboard so i've got myself a cupboard here you can do it in a door frame wherever you're comfortable and you're going to be standing with your hand on your hip and you're going to be doing that movement so you're going to stabilize the shoulder joint it's a little bit awkward at first, but you'll get used to it. And from a forward position, you're going to push back onto the cupboard and go forward again, back and forth. You don't want to do too many to start with. So you can maybe do three sets of 12. You can even hold it there for a second. And just remember to keep stability on the shoulder joint. You don't want it popping forward and back. You want this to be stable so that you can isolate the scapula and shoulder joint, making it more stable over time. So the next two exercises are always shown with the resistance band, but if you're trying to get that stability back in your shoulder and you're struggling with pain and that joint is moving around, the resistance band is, is going to put more pressure on the joint. It's going to make you feel like you flared up or overtrained. So start this without the resistance band. And then once you've got this movement and it feels more and more comfortable over the next few days or weeks, you can add a light resistance band and just go heavier and heavier. And that's the gradual process you must do with all these things. Okay, so the first one, if you're struggling with too much pain or you can't reach out or outstretch your hand, then rather don't do it. Just do the second exercise. But if you can, what you want to be doing is reaching forward, not too far, just a little bit forward and pulling back. Now remember to isolate and try to feel that muscle-mind connection. So when you're pulling back, you can actually feel the surrounding muscles pulling. Now, if you're struggling with a shoulder injury like the Racer Gatlin Syndrome or frozen shoulder, you might struggle with this a lot and you might want to avoid it. Just do the second exercise. But even if you are attempting it and you feel okay to do it and you're pulling, you'll feel because you're not used to that movement, you'll feel that this whole area is going to get very stiff very quickly. You might feel a lot of fatigue in the area. It might be difficult holding your hand up. So just do what you can. Just do a few. So if you're just starting, you've been struggling um, and you haven't been doing much movement, just start and just do gentle, light uh, reaching out. So you just want to reach out and pull back and try pull it back, squeeze it a bit further back. Um, just focus on your form. You don't want to be pushing your shoulder joint too far forward. You want to keep everything nice and tight so you can even do a shoulder squeeze, reach forward and pull back. So you're just going to isolate that. Everything's going to pull back nicely. And those stabilizing muscles are going to help you keep that good posture. And it's going to eliminate the movement in the joint. So the last one I'm going to show you today is a really easy one to do. Might feel difficult in the beginning. But as you get stronger and stronger, you can incorporate a resistance band. But it's really simple. You don't need any equipment. You can either stand or sit. Your elbows are going to be next to you. You can do one at a time. And all you're going to be doing is moving from this position with your arm in front of you outwards. So don't force your arm too far out because you might cause yourself a flare up if you're doing way too many of these. So to start off with, just go as far as it allows you. You're going to get better range of motion as the days and weeks go on. You might only be able to do this and you're just going to do slow controlled squeezes. This just brings your shoulders back, it gets that roundness out. It gets all those stabilizing muscles to pull back and open up your chest, get a better posture, and it's going to keep the rotator cuff and everything in the shoulder joint more stable. Over time, you'll see you'll get a better range of motion and you can actually add a lot more motion into it without popping. And then at a later stage, when you get stronger, you can actually add a resistance band. You can tie it onto a door frame or you can hold it with the other arm 
and you can add that resistance. So you don't have to go as far out, but you can get that squeeze into the shoulder and it's gonna eliminate the popping. It's gonna make you feel a lot better. Not as much movement in the joint, so you can actually feel a bit more stable and balanced and you'll generally feel a whole lot better. So I hope this helps you. I'll see you guys soon.